Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome all of you back to Ohio Exopolitics. I'm your host, Mark Snyder. I'm going to start the show out this morning playing some clips concerning uh, recent events. I won't give it any more introduction than that, um, but stand by while I make a few adjustments, and then you'll, you'll understand why these are important concepts, I think. with VL, and we are here today. We had a special treat. We have Robert David Steele back with us after his RV tour, but we're going to talk with him today about um, what happened in Las Vegas and see if he's got any insight for us. Hi, Robert. Thank hey, Robert. you for being back with us. Welcome back. Welcome. Thank you, Jim. I'm glad to be back. You both look great. I, I will never forget that you helped me get our unrig program started. Uh, you were one of the biggest voices. Thank you. Well, thank you yeah, for saying we're that. We're happy to do that. So, uh, Robert, Las Vegas. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot more questions than there are answers at this point. Um, what's your take on it right now, so far, from what you know? Number one, Las Vegas is absolutely a false flag event. Whether people died or not, this has been concocted by the Ziocons, by the deep state. This is something in which Sheldon Adelson, who owns the casinos in the area where it happened, and Michael Shertoff, the Zionist first director of the uh, Department of Homeland Security, are in a co-conspiracy with others. Now, I haven't seen any bodies. There are no photographs. And if you look at the most recent photograph of the actual crime scene, where one alleged body is being wrapped in a sheet and put in a truck, there are zero blood pools. I've seen disasters where people have died and bled, and you see coagulated blood pools everywhere. In fact, even a bloody nose, if it's left unattended for about 15 or 20 minutes, creates a blood pool about this big and about a quarter inch deep. Uh, None of that is present. So from where I sit, A, this is absolutely a false flag. B, the guy that was killed was a patsy. C, the entire official narrative makes absolutely zero sense. It's almost as if our patriotic law enforcement officers are deliberately not telling these people how bad their theatrical management is as a patriotic way of helping all of us see that this is a false flag. Uh, The Zionists and the deep state have overextended themselves. They've overplayed their hands in two big ways in the last two months. This is one of them. The other one is the legislation before Congress, which makes it a felony to criticize Israel Mm -hmm. and call for the uh, boycotting of Israeli products and so forth. Every single senator and member of the House of Representatives who has co-sponsored that bill should be thrown out of office by anyone who cares about the U.S. Constitution and restoring the Republic and America first. Las Vegas is about Israel first. Las Vegas is about the deep state wanting to take away our guns. Las Vegas is about the deep state being deeply worried about what happened in Barcelona. And I have put together a post. The memorable tiny URL is Las Vegas false flag. So tinyurl.com forward slash Las Vegas false flag with the first letter in each of the four words capitalized, Las Vegas false flag. And I have put there the epic references on false flag. I've put together some of the best videos on false flags, and I'll add this one with you. But Jordan Safer remains one of the stars, one of the rising stars mm-hmm. in holistic analytics on YouTube. Yeah. I deeply admire this guy. Uh, so that's one of the first videos. I've also got from one of my um, deep web guys um, 
a conversation that took place in the deep web on the 10th of September, announcing that Las Vegas was going to have a mass casualty event in hmm. October. Okay, so all of that is at tinyurl.com forward slash Las Vegas uh, false flag. Okay. My bottom line is this is something that if the director of the FBI allows it to stand and does not correct the record with the public, this is one of the final straws for American citizens who are now beginning to wake up and understand that our government is not in friendly hands. Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is the Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. A lot of tweets, of course, about Las Vegas. I um, spoke about it briefly in the monologue. Wanted to wait until we had our next guest on. He's been on the program several times before. We like him. He's a former CIA officer, of course, and the CEO of Earth Intelligence Network. He was recently on the program talking about his initiative on RIG, which is very interesting, a non-profit civics education campaign, which, of course, uh, it, within which, of course, he was joined by former Georgia Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, a really, really important initiative as well. We might talk about that in a few minutes' time, but we want to talk about Las Vegas. Let's welcome back to the show our friend Robert David Steele. Robert, welcome back. How are you? Richie, glad to be with you. Are we only audio or just video also? We're just audio today, my friend. I'm too ugly for TV. You're gorgeous, but I'm too ugly for TV, so you can switch off the old TV camera there. Thanks, Robert. Robert, your initial thoughts then, straight up, on what you've seen in the last two, two and a half days. Uh, Stephen Paddock, 64, uh, dozens killed, hundreds injured. The reaction to it, the media coverage of it, what are your thoughts so far? What do you think? Number one, it is absolutely a false flag associated with a FEMA uh, drill that has been taking place for several days. It is a false flag. Number two, there is absolutely no evidence that anyone other than Paddock has died. Uh, number three, I'm sure that Paddock, if his hands were tested, would test negative for gun residue, just like Lee Harvey Oswald in uh, Dallas. He's a patsy. Um, what we don't know is whether people have actually died. Uh, the entire official narrative is absolutely a lie. I don't know either. And I was glad to read in the article that you sent me today. And I suppose it's, you know, it's, it's grown up journalism. You did say that, that you have no direct knowledge, which is fair, very fair premise um, at the outset. And I really appreciate that. I obviously have no idea either, and I'm certainly not going to contradict you uh, here. I, if I had to make a bet on it, I would say they probably killed some people. I think some people might have died. Again, I can't back it up. I'm interested, Robert, in some of the videos that have come out, and you've alluded to them in your article, which I'm going to tweet out now to our listeners. Well, I've put, I've put a couple of videos yeah, in there. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Talk about those videos. All right. Well, let me, let, me, let me say a couple of things first off. I am absolutely certain in my own mind that we were warned by 13 countries about 9-11 months in advance. Dick Cheney scheduled a national level counterterrorism exercise for the day of 9-11. And Dick Cheney personally oversaw the murder of 3,000 U.S. and other citizens in New York and the Pentagon to suit the Ziocon, the Zionist neoconservative goals. There's no question that these people will murder up to 3,000 people in order to get their way. And they'll get away with it because the uh, acting director of the FBI and the new director of the FBI, their entire job, this was Mueller. Mueller's entire job as director of the FBI was to keep Dick Cheney from being found out. Uh, so I'm very disgusted with these people. As to whether people died or not, we just don't know. The fact is, all of the evidence suggests that no one died. There are no blood pools. And the videos that purport to show people that are wounded, the one that's going around from this leak channel, is nonsense. Uh, first off, it's a very narrow cast thing. There's no wide area survey. It's, there's no scene of lots of bodies spread around. It's almost like they're following a, tra a trail of breadcrumbs. But more tellingly, the person who's examining them keeps saying, no entry wound, no exit, no exit wound, cannot treat. No entry wound, no exit wound, cannot treat. Newsflash, crisis actors. That's my best guess right this minute. You see, I can't argue with that. I don't want 
I don't want not to argue with you, but I can't argue because I've seen well, this. And, and look at the look at the video yeah. of the taxi the taxi scene. The way in which that camera was managed was very carefully calibrated to avoid showing the people. It was almost like a crisis action script, and the taxi was actually positioned, waiting for the event to begin, and for these people to then so-called rush into the taxi. Yeah. All of this, I've run a false flag for the CIA. All nobody died in mine. All of this reeks, absolutely reeks, of a false flag event. And I really have to stress, there is no way on God's earth that Paddock fired a bullet into that crowd. Hello and welcome to this Dot Connector video cast for subscribers to davidike.com. Well, of course, the news has been dominated this week by what happened in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Hotel with nearly 60 people dead, hundreds injured after a, uh, a mass shooting uh, named to have done it alone currently, but we don't know that, called Stephen Paddock. And the response to it from the media has taken a depressingly predictable um, sequence where, first of all, the event happens. There is an official story of the event, which unfolds piece by piece. And then the media take that official story as solid gold, truth to forever be the history of that event. And just repeats it and repeats it and repeats it and repeats it until the population in general accept that that is actually what happened. And uh, I was uh, out walking this week, uh, listening on the, um, on the radio, on the earphones, to the BBC coverage of the aftermath of Las Vegas. And the presenters and the interviewers were just... Uh, going down the tired and predictable reactive uh, lines in response to these events. And as each um, new element of the official story was given, it was taken to be true. And this, um, this process uh, goes like this every time. First of all, the police or the authorities say, this is what happened, and this is the background. And you know, at the first reporting, it might be said, uh, police say, or the authorities say, this is what happened. But very soon, the authorities say and the police say, it disappears. And it's just, well, that's the way it was. Every time I get a chance, Listen to Roger Stowe or If I Was. Roger's a badass MF. Alex Jones here with Roger Stone. I'm going to eject out here in about 12 minutes or 10 minutes, but I wanted to finish up with Roger. Was this a weapons transfer gone bad? I know from our hostage rescue team sources on Monday morning, just 12 hours after this had taken place, they said, no, he fired back. We killed him. You know, we put the photo out. They tried to deny it first. Now they admit it's a real photo. And then, of course, uh, expanding on all of that on my Twitter, Real Alex Jones, expanding on all that, our sources said that uh, there, there was definitely the BS going on was the words used, and that there was a lot of Middle Eastern travel documents and information photos, and that he, he had women going back and forth, not just the girlfriend, but the, the women and others. And now we know she had like two husbands going to the Middle East, going to the Philippines with the big Al-Qaeda uh, ISIS uprisings. Uh, he had millions and millions of dollars, just gambled all the time, was traveling back and forth uh, in and out of the country, obviously using the casinos to launder the money. That's what they use those for. And then the brother gives these testimonies where, oh, he wasn't involved in anything, didn't own any guns. Oh, he had guns. He's the mastermind. He did it all in, in 48 hour total 180. Uh, he has like an earpiece in. He's like, well, well what did I say? Sorry, I didn't get that right. Okay, I'll get it right this time. I mean, this is like Loyal and Hardy are running this or something. Uh, so I've never seen anything like this. All I know is 
They're trying to blame gun owners when it was patriots that got targeted. They're making their move. The Democrats have said they're going to have a huge uprising in October, November. It's here. Roger, I mean, we've laid all this out. We've told folks it's here. And now I have Colonel Schaefer of the CIA high level. And we've got top psychiatrists from, you know, from the federal government that have examined these people. And they're saying clearly he's Antifa. Clearly it's the MO to trigger a helter-skelter revolution. Clearly the Democrats are saying hashtag hunt Republicans. They've created the climate. Uh, I mean, this is an incredible time to be alive where they target patriots and then blame us for it. Roger, what's your gut tell you? Because this is just so bombshell. Well, yesterday, Alex, as you know, on the War Room, uh, we aired um, a video that we found uh, at YouTube that clearly shows Paddock, the shooter, attending an anti-Trump rally. A woman refers to him by his first name, Stephen. He, he uh, answers to it, making it even more obvious that he has a leftist connection. And if it's not him, it's his twin brother. I mean, the video is conclusive. It is him or, or it's his twin brother. There's no there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, you and I both remember back in 1963 when the mainstream media came out almost immediately and said Lee Harvey Oswald, lone nut, communist, came from Russia and so on. And that became the official narrative. That won't work anymore. It's not 1963 anymore. Now people can harness the power of Infowars, the power of the Internet and a dozen other alternative uh, media Well, let's say outlets. it. I mean, it's the autistic keyboard army. The media says we say that meanly. No, they call themselves that. They'll do it 25 hours a day. I know there's only 24. It's a joke for the Young Turks. I don't know how many hours are in a day. That 25 hours a day, it's like 110%. Uh, they will go in there and find every piece of data. You cannot stop them. No, it's actually exciting in the sense that it's a tragedy, of course, that uh, this awful loss of life. But what we're seeing is citizen democracy in action. We no longer have to buy the BS of the mainstream media who will give us the government sanitized version of what happened in Las Vegas. We will, collectively we, will get to the bottom of this and we will find out exactly what happened. That's right. It's an information total revolution, like 1776, but squared to the next level. It's beautiful. It's incredible. It's unstoppable. Well, and... Welcome to this Dot Connector video cast for subscribers to DavidIke.com. Well, of uh, great interest to me this week has been the reports in national newspapers in Britain about the investigation into the paedophile activities of the former British Prime Minister Edward Heath. Interesting to me because I named him as a paedophile and as a child sacrificing Satanist 20 years ago. And interestingly, among the reports this week is one that a group of uh, women are claiming that their parents ran a paedophile ring, which sacrificed children, and that Edward Heath was connected to it. Of course, when you, when you see these reports and, and the people that, that write them, what surrounds them is incredulity, bizarre, fantasy, and such descriptions are everywhere when these things come out. But when you've been um, investigating this for a long time, in my case from the mid-1990s, then these things become commonplace in the sense of the number of times that you've heard them. And what these um, women are reported to be claiming about Ted Heath 
that um, her parents were running a pedophile ring that was sacrificing um, children in uh, satanic rituals in southern England is a description that I've heard over and over and over again with many and various famous names involved, not just in Britain, but all over the world. And another thing that happened this week, which will seem to be in no way connected, is this story about NASA scientists finding a solar system with uh, planets, Earth-like planets, um, where there could be extraterrestrial life. It doesn't seem to be in any way uh, connected to the theme of what I'm saying this week, but I'll come to that later. In a way, it is. The stories about um, former Prime Minister Ted Heath in the papers this week relate to what is claimed to be a leak from inside the investigation into Heath by Wiltshire Police, which claims that the chief constable of Wiltshire, Mike Veal, has said that the evidence against Heath, given by witnesses who've come forward, is 120% true, he believes. I'm going to connect some dots today that um, might not on the surface seem to connect, two in particular. Um, And this is the first one. Spermageddon. This is one of uh, a stream of reports in the media this week about a study, 43,000 men involved, that concluded that sperm counts are plummeting catastrophically, to the point where the lead researcher was saying that if it continues like this, then there is a threat to the human race itself. Dot number two is um, this one, a um, article in a British newspaper, 800 children as young as 10 given sex change drugs. And of course, we've had this explosion of focus in this whole arena we call transgender in recent times. And the third um, dot, the one that you know, might not seem to be connected at all, is this one. Will robots destroy us? This is a, a report, again, widely uh, reported around the world, of this spat uh, between uh, two of these high-tech Silicon Valley moguls, Mark Zuckerberg, the T-shirt at um, Facebook, and Elon Musk, uh, a co-founder of PayPal, and one of the leaders in this whole transhumanist um, high-tech arena. Uh, And they have very different views on um, the dangers or benefits of artificial intelligence. So there's three dots which would not appear on the surface to be connected, like I say, two of them in particular. Uh, but let's start off with this, this collapse in sperm counts. This uh, was a study, like I say, of 43,000 men. Uh, and what they did was pull together nearly 200 other studies and did an analysis of them. And they were basically... Um, focused in the Western world countries of North America, Europe, Australia, uh, New Zealand. And they found a 59.3% decline in total sperm count um, in men from those areas of the world. Western birth uh, rates have also been falling for 30 years, according to reports, um, uh, in this same Period And, uh, of course, fertility services, which when I was uh, young, uh, I've got a good memory, uh, you hardly ever heard of. It's now a, a massive uh, industry. 
trying to help couples um, conceive children. And um, another thing that's happened in this period, when something clearly is messing with the reproductive uh, processes in men, not only men, probably, but this is what this study was about, testicular um, cancer rates um, have doubled in 30 years. This is there any way maybe listeners can help the situation or what would you like? Most medicines are American and European. What would you like them to hear? You know, this is an interesting one. The main thing that I would like is for word to spread. The more we can tell other whites and also a lot of what is happening to you whites in Britain, Europe, America, and so forth, are actually the same things that happened to us. It's just happening in a slightly different fashion, but nowadays your countries are being, are the places that are targeted for diversity. When I was a kid, they told us that black rule, in, that white rule in Rhodesia was a bad thing because we were colonialists. So that was, that was the crime of the white people then. It was colonialism. Then when I came to South Africa, they were telling the whites of South Africa, because South Africa was no longer a colony. South Africa was a internationally recognized republic. And it was run by whites. They had, they had proper self-rule. They did not have to give anything away. They were the legitimate government, and Britain had, had created this state, and they had continued with this state. They had now introduced apartheid, but there had been some apartheid under British rule as well. It just wasn't called by that name. And these whites were then told that their crime was apartheid. So mm -hmm. apartheid became the crime of those whites. Now the rest of you whites, in Britain, Europe, and America, your crime now is that you aren't diversified enough. You are too white. Your problem and your crime is that you are too white. So all that I've seen in my life is that every, every time the communists and the elite and the non-whites get in on this act, they come up with some new bogus reason as to why white people have to be destroyed. Why How would you feel if everything you knew about the world was wrong? What if behind our democratically elected leaders was an elite society, a secret society, that been running the affairs of the planet for hundreds, possibly thousands of years? common belief that the pursuit and control of money is the key to power. You need look no further than the back of a dollar bill, a symbol of the wealth of the world's only superpower, to see how influential a secretive group such as the Freemasons actually are. On the back of this note, which passes through the hands of hundreds of millions of people every day, you will find the American seal, a pyramid with an eye, an ancient symbol of Freemasonry. If you overlay this symbol with another ancient Masonic symbol, a six-pointed star, it points to the letters M, A, S, O, and N, Mason. At least 13 presidents are known to have been Freemasons, but some accuse them of all belonging, the ultimate and oldest secret society, the Illuminati. But who are they? Clearly, secrecy was a contentious issue, so he decided to start with someone who would happily tell us what he thought of it all. In all our time of research, one name continually came up. 
David Icke is considered a leading voice in the conspiracy world, and we decided to travel to his home on the Isle of Wight to see what he had to say. Hello there, is that uh, David Icke? Ah, oh, hello there, right, um, it's uh, Dan Turner, the uh, guy from Sunderland. All right, look, uh, I'm in Ride now, yeah, we're, uh, we're by the uh, golf course, uh, where it says that... This was the sign. first time that we'd spoken to David, up. until yeah. now, contact has been through email or answer phone yeah, messages. Right, yeah. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> the man. Yeah, that's a pretty good question. Okay. <coughs> Alright then, man. All right, nice to meet you. Alright, go around the corner. Yeah. Uh, into the parking space here. And hopefully, one of the two visitors will be open. Alright, okay, cheers then. People need to know some of the background um, of what we're dealing with and how they manipulate us. Because when people first hear that a few people control the many, the first reaction is, you must be joking, mate. There's six billion people on this planet. A few people can't control them all. Of course they can't. Well, folks, we had a lot of clips this episode. I hope you enjoyed him. I sometimes like to sit back and just listen to what some of the other folks have to say about <clears throat> various things that are going on in the world. There certainly is a lot of interesting things going on with the we've got the Las Vegas shooter who uh Robert Steele is a former CIA officer who actually for the CIA is saying that the Las Vegas shooter was a false flag event. That doesn't mean people were killed. It just means that it was a contrived event for a specific purpose. In this case, probably probably gun control. It seems that the powers that be, whoever they are, are trying to set up a kind of an Orwellian totalitarian, tyrannical state, and they're well on their way to doing that. We also talked a little bit about the beginnings of this transgender movement and the decrease in sperm counts. We talked a little bit about white genocide. It seems that, especially in Europe, with the influx of all the uh, Muslims, And in South Africa, we're seeing white genocide. And then we finished up there with David Icke talking about the global elite. There seemed to be an elite group of people that are running the world now. And they don't seem to have our best interests in heart, at heart. So how do we... We cope with all this insanity in the world today. Well, we do it by controlling our thinking. And the Meyer teachings tell us that neutral positive thoughts are healthy thoughts. And we should always focus on thinking in a neutral positive way, not too positive or too never negative. And our consciousness determines our own health to a great degree by the means of the might of our thoughts. And your thoughts actually determine the health of your body or its decline. So your body is a a gentle and plastic kind of instrument. It reacts to the kind of thoughts which you nurture. This is the reason why we shouldn't allow habitual thinking to take the upper hand too much. It's the automatic thoughts which disturb the feelings and then the psyche. So we need to steer our thoughts very much. We, we need to control our thoughts. And the body, I said, was plastic. That means it's easily shaped and molded. The body, is said to react without intervening time or space to our thoughts. So when you nurture good thoughts, and one of the techniques to nurture good thoughts, and this is one of the things I found, I 
I looked through the book, The Might of Thoughts, and I found key words where Billy describes how our thoughts should be. And um, we should be optimistic, confident, relaxed, cheerful, enthusiastic. We should persist, persevere, endure, and be calm. Let me go through those again. You can tell yourself, I am confident, I am optimistic, I am relaxed, I am cheerful, I am thankful, I am enthusiastic, I persist, I persevere, I endure, I am calm. So this, if you can nurture that, that's a way to nurture, encourage, growth uh, for good thoughts. So when you're faced with a, a difficulty that tends to pull you into wrong thinking, just remember that little thing that I brought up there. That'll help you a lot. See, old habits are hard to break. And new habits are hard to form because behavior patterns tend to repeat. So what I'm doing by repeating these, these statements, I am confident, I'm optimistic, I'm relaxed. I'm cheerful, I'm thankful, I'm enthusiastic, I'm in harmony, I persist, I persevere, I endure, I am calm. I'm imprinting neural pathways. And the neural pathways are these tiny gaps between the brain cells that are called synapses. And the electrical signal has to jump across the gap or the synapse. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm imprinting, I'm nurturing, I'm clarifying these synapses. I'm building these healthy, positive synapses. So if you're having a difficult time in your life, if you're facing some really challenging circumstances, then learn to build these neuropathways in your brain. And the first trip across the gap in the synapses, it's the hardest. But as we move across the gaps more and more, it becomes easier and easier to move across the synapse. So learning is about creating and strengthening these pathways through our brain. So that's what we're doing. When I say I'm confident, I'm optimistic, I'm relaxed, I'm cheerful, I'm thankful, I'm enthusiastic, we are creating and strengthening pathways in the brain and it is widely accepted that the synapse plays a role in the format formation of memory so what i'm doing is strengthening synapses and this is also known as long-term potentiation long-term potentiation is a persistent strengthening of synapses based on recent patterns of activity So what we're doing here in terms of the technical term, in terms of psychology or psychiatry and studying the brain, is we're doing a long-term potentiation. So we're strengthening the synapses. We're saying, I'm confident, I'm optimistic, I'm relaxed, I'm cheerful, I'm thankful, I'm enthusiastic, I'm in harmony. I persist, I persevere, I endure, I am calm. And pretty 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 soon you you're getting rid of the sick, bad, negative thoughts and feelings. And that that will help your body. When we are pessimistic, remember I talked about optimism there, but when we're when we're pessimistic, pessimistic, we are tending to see the worst of things or believe the worst will happen. You never, ever want to do that because optimists do live longer. Having a positive attitude lowers your risks of heart attacks and things like that. So the origin of the thoughts forms various factors which deal with our wishes and desires. So we have to think about the origin of our thoughts. What is causing these thoughts that we're having? 
If you're having good, clean, neutral, positive thoughts, then you're great. Your psyche will not be harmed. You don't want to degenerate into a negative or a positive imbalance. The goal is always to maintain a harmony in the psyche. So we want to affirm these things that we know. Affirm means to offer emotional support and encouragement. So you want to be your own best friend. You want to fulfill your duty to yourself. What we're learning here is encouraging ourselves. Interesting concept, isn't it? We are learning to fulfill our duty to ourselves. You know, I was reading material from the Might of Thoughts book, but there's another great book. It's called The Way to Live. And it's, in the German, it's called Die Art zu Leben. It was a book written between 1995, November 8th, and January 8th of 97 by Edward Albert Meyer. It was translated by Vivian Legg and Dyson Divine into English. And keep in mind that there's always the the... The evolution code in in Billy's German spiritual texts, the words must be in the correct position and free of errors from beginning to the end. The code releases impulses from the storage banks. So reading some of this stuff in the German is very, very helpful. So we, 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 we need to remember to fulfill our duty to ourselves. We need to be benevolent, honest, Never turn your back on yourself. Be kind-hearted. No feelings of inferiority. I I have to always remind myself of that. No bitterness, no self-abuse, no flattery either. Uh, Don't devote yourself to your passions. Truly, whoever always hangs around beyond his own house becomes a stranger in his own home, in his own family. So another thing... Maybe we could put on our list here is don't be hanging out in bars and stuff. Also, be careful about boredom because boredom is a sign of something wrong within your point of view. So we need to be our best friend. We need to fulfill our duty to ourselves. Some people go off trying to seek enjoyment. Your closest and best friend is yourself. Let me let me read this here. It says, Constantly guard yourself against neglecting or even disregarding or disowning your best and truest and closest friend, namely yourself with whom you are closest always and for all times. Therefore, never neglect yourself and esteem your own friendship to yourself. Be caring, open, and honest towards your inner friend, which is yourself. To yourself and to your own eye, constantly concern yourself with never turning your back on yourself and thus neither on your inner friend who you certainly always need. And it's, you know, it's interesting. If you fulfill your duty to yourself, sometimes your problems with friends and family and pets and things like that will also fall in line because a lot of times if your thoughts are getting negative, you're just making things worse. Don't devote yourself to your passion because... You'll end up like someone running through the smoldering desert, dying of thirst. And others will respect you when you respect yourself more. Don't do things in a hidden way. Always be upfront. Boredom, again, is something to look at. If you're bored, you need to start striving more. Striving is one of these creational natural laws. And if you're not living under the law of striving, then you're not going to be happy. The creation itself, as well as all its creatures, envies and heightened, is imbued with the power of striving. 
in order to attain success. So you should always be striving at something. And you don't have to be killing yourself. We're, the goal here is to be neutral positive in your thinking, even when you're striving. So if you get out of balance when you're striving, you're not doing things the way you should. You're not doing things in the most productive way. You should enjoy your work. It's all about your thinking. And the power that the thinking uses does not stem from you. It streams from your spirit into our consciousness out of the expanse of the universe. So somehow our thoughts get their power from the spirit of the earth life of the creation. The power of our thoughts literally comes from creation, which is an incredible idea, uh, an amazing thing. Uh, just as a side tangent, take some time in the morning to read the Meyer material because it says here, the best time for studying is always early in the morning when the consciousness is still fresh. So if you can read a little bit of the Meyer information before you go to work or start your day, uh, this is a really good thing to do. I started on a show last night with uh, Mr. Rowe. If you haven't listened to that show yet, you might want to. Mr. Rowe is a very interesting guy. Uh, a person on Revolution Radio has a really good program. Uh, I uploaded a uh, CD. Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Eve. Hi, Gemini. Uh, yes, I'm taking a day off, devoting it, part of it anyway, to to the program. We've had a, a tremendous number of listeners to the archive. I'm just blown away, and I'm so thankful for that. But I was digressing there. I um, had an interesting show, and I was talking about reincarnation. And one of the important things I wanted to bring back up about reincarnation is an interesting term called the overall consciousness block, which is the translation of the German Gesamtbewusstsein block, which I need to check the the pronunciation on that, so forgive me. This is a storage bank in the other world that's created by the spirit form. It is a place where your old consciousness is dissolved and a new consciousness is built up. Remember, your spirit form lives always. It never dies. The material consciousness does die. The body does die. The the spirit form, when death occurs, comes out of the body. It takes your consciousness with it. And it goes into the spirit realm. It's kind of an energy band around the planet. And what it does is it processes all of the experiences you had in the previous lifetime. And everything that's neutral positive, everything that is of value, is absorbed by the spirit form. So everything, your confidence, your optimism, your calmness, your thankfulness, your persistence, your endurance, your love, your honesty, your warmth, your discernment, your logic, all of that is absorbed by the spirit form in this time between lives. So we need this time between lives to, to really sort out everything that we learned from the previous life. And then the spirit form works to create a new personality and a new consciousness and will be pulled back into the fetus of a child. 
meaning we, meaning a spirit form. In this case, it might be your spirit form that will be pulled back into the body of a child. Now, within that child's subconscious are programmed all the evolutive values from all the cumulative lifetimes. So your wisdom from your many, many lifetimes is stored in your subconscious. It's also stored in your spirit form. And you will get impulses from that learning, from those evolutive values. And you have to kind of start to listen to those impulses because the inner eye will start to tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Let me read a section here from the from the psyche. In order to reach the high evolutionary level mentioned, the human being must have already lived through his or her seemingly endless reincarnations of 42 million years of his evolution. It can be 40 to 60 million years of reincarnation into a physical body. According to things that I've read. However, this is not true for any one human life form on Earth and also not for any spirit form belonging to the higher sphere of Earth. Because the human beings of Earth themselves, those created on the Earth, are still so young, regarding their evolution, they are only beginning to change their last baby shoes. While those human beings living on Earth, who originally came from the far reaches of space, only have a total age of 8 to 12 million years. So there are some spirits, spirit forms here on the Earth, who came here on ships, in the ancient past, maybe during the time of Atlantis and Lemuria, or during the time of Pelagon. Maybe those were some of the people who came here from the Seer system, uh, the genetically manipulated people. By the way, we're all, we're all have that genetic manipulation now that shortens our lifespan and increases our aggression. But it says here, therefore the human being of Earth is not yet in the position to comprehend all the nuances of feeling so one of the things that we'll learn to do is to understand our feelings better. And let me talk about that a little bit because feeling your feeling is a good indicator of what your thoughts are. And if you start to if you have a thought and then you start to feel bad, you know, you'll be able to detect that right away. Well, you might want to re-examine that thought to try to correct that thought. Because the feelings come from the thoughts, always. So these are very practical things to think about. And you're, if you start to have negative feelings, go back and correct that thought. Think about what that thought was. B- because the older you get, the more your face will even show your thoughts. And wrinkles can appear based to a degree on our thoughts. So we have to learn to control our thoughts. And like I said, tell yourself, I'm confident, I'm relaxed, I'm optimistic, I'm perseverant, I'm enduring, I'm thankful, I'm enthusiastic, I'm relaxed, I'm cheerful, I'm in harmony. Tell yourself these things and then you'll have good feelings. So which, so the, the feelings, what I'm saying is the feelings are a good indicator of what the thoughts are. Now your wrong thinking can shake your whole nervous system. Neutral, positive, healthy, and happy thoughts will build up the strength of your health, of your resistance, of your immune system. So don't allow yourself to have habitual thoughts. Constructive thoughts. Okay, here's another way to tell. When you have a constructive thought, 
you'll feel calm. Constructive thoughts produce a calmness. And learning to control your thoughts like this is a way to prepare for death. Because you will have rational thoughts through the death process, which can make your death like a magnificent sunset. On the other hand, if you have wrong negative thoughts, the feelings form the same way. And when you have wrong negative thoughts, your body becomes vulnerable to illness, disease. The immune system becomes impaired. So think constructive, beautiful, positive, happy thoughts. I'm confident, I'm optimistic, I'm relaxed, I'm cheerful, I'm thankful, I'm enthusiastic, I'm in harmony, I endure, I persist, I persevere, I'm calm. So the other thing that we need to learn to develop is a purposefulness. Now, this is to get an insight into the consciousness is kind of interesting. We kind of have three minds. and I'm running out of time here, but we have three minds. We have the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious. The conscious mind is your objective thinking mind. Uh, I've read some things that say that the conscious really has no memory. And your conscious, your conscious is... Your conscious mind identifies information, it compares information, it does analysis, and it makes decision. Now, the subconscious mind is sometimes called the pre-conscious mind. And the pre-conscious or subconscious mind is very interesting because you might have a long forgotten childhood memory suddenly emerge after decades. I've had that happen this week. I, I wouldn't say it was long forgotten, but things I hadn't thought of in a long time, a long, long time, suddenly come back. Very interesting. Why? I, I'm not sure. The unconscious is a part of the mind that's not accessible to the conscious mind, but it affects your behavior and your emotions. So the unconscious mind is like a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges, memories that are not always within your conscious awareness. That's why they sometimes bubble up in dreams. You start having crazy dreams and like sometimes you wake up because you're having a bad dream, but you can't even remember what it was. But you knew you were having a bad dream. (laughs) It's all crazy, you know. (laughs) It's bizarre. So the unconscious mind is kind of like an iceberg. Everything above the the water is the conscious awareness, while everything below the water really represents the unconscious. So I hope some of these thoughts have been helpful and, and contemplate them throughout your day. We'll probably certainly be doing another show at some point this weekend. I hope you've been enjoying these Ohio Exopolitics. You've been listening to Ohio Exopolitics. I'm your host, Mark Snyder. Have a great day. Thank you very much.